the impressive evolution of Formula One cars. When Formula One began in 1950, the cars then were smaller and used thin tires, and now they've undergone explosive transformation for over 70 years. From the engine and internal components of Formula One cars to the materials used and bodywork itself, the technology utilized in F1 has advanced almost beyond recognition. The first Grand Prix in F1 history took place on 13th of May 1950 at Silverstone and was won by Giuseppe Nino Farina in the Alfa Romeo 158, which he went on to take the title with later in the year. The car, affectionately known as the El Feta, had an estimated top speed of around 180 miles per hour and could do 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4 seconds. By comparison, a modern F1 car has a top speed of around 225 miles per hour and can do 0 to 60 in 2 seconds. It's only when the respective power of the cars is taken into consideration that the progress in technology can really be appreciated. The Elfetta's 1.5-litre supercharged inline 8-cylinder engine gave out 350 brake horsepower, whereas F1's current 1.6-litre V6 turbo hybrid engine gives out around 1,000 brake horsepower, despite being only 100 cc's bigger, as well as using a fraction of the fuel. The 1950 car was estimated to weigh 35 kilograms less than the current Alfa Romeo C39, which is around 746 kilograms. Perhaps the most immediate noticeable difference between a current F1 engine and that used in 1950 is the location. In the beginning, the cars were front-engined, and it was not until 1955 that a rear-engined car first appeared in the World Championship. Then, the car engines were supercharged, with compressed air fed into the engine cylinders, multiplying its explosive potential. The inlet and exhaust valves were operated by double overhead camshafts, and each cylinder's two valves were splayed for the optimal angle for combustion. In producing 350 brake horsepower, the engine of old Formula One cars created so much internal heat that fuel had to be used for cooling as well as combustion, resulting in the car averaging only 1.5 miles per gallon, where the current F1 cars average between 6 to 7 miles per gallon. Since 2014, Formula One has employed the use of hybrid technology to power the cars. The small combustion engine is paired with the MGUH and MGUK that recover waste heat and kinetic energy respectively, and this recycling of waste energy can provide around 160 bhp for 33 seconds a lap. Developments in technology pertaining to the engine remains a key area of innovation, despite stringent rules as to what can and cannot be changed. Aerodynamics in motorsport as we consider them today did not really come about until the late 1960s, and as a consequence the cars taking part in the inaugural F1 season were devoid of downforce-producing wings and bodywork features that are now considered synonymous with single-seater racing. Regardless, today aerodynamics performance is the biggest performance differentiator. Generating more and more efficient downforce has improved key areas such as cornering and braking that allow F1 cars to reach such high average speeds. The whole car is now designed around the concept of being aerodynamically efficient, including all of the bodywork such as the barge boards and side pods, as well as specifically aero-related parts such as the front and rear wing. Much of the car's downforce is generated from the airflow under the floor, so that is an especially important area alongside the diffuser. Back in 1950, the steering wheels of Formula One cars were about as basic as could be and were made up of aluminium and wood. It was only some years back before teams began to incorporate buttons and switches onto the wheel. Today, steering wheels can have over 20 interactive elements that can make all manner of different changes to the car. The clutch and gear selection are controlled by paddles on the side of the wheel, and drivers can also change the brake balance, adjust the engine settings, deploy the DRS and speak to the team over the radio, all at the touch of a button. They are custom-built to each driver, both to the ergonomics of their hands and to take into account different preferences over button locations. Steering wheels have come a long way from the days when they were only used to steer. On suspension, the suspension on the model Alfetta was fairly simplistic, with transverse leaf springs at the front and a swing axle at the rear that was supported by leaf springs. The swing axle did make the rear wheels independent of each other, but compared to the suspension of F1 cars now, it only seems like a token gesture. 70 years on and an F1 car suspension is made up of a complex mixture of springs, dampers, rockers, wishbones, pull and push rods, axles and a lot more. Much of the car's setup changes are made to the suspension, and getting that right is essential for making the car react properly to the driver's inputs. 
Increasingly over the years, the suspension has become an integral part of the aerodynamics of the cars. It can change the airflow around the car and is responsible for making sure that the pitch and ride height are well controlled, even as the downforce levels change across the lap. Like the rest of the car, the suspension has become significantly more technical over the years. While it is impossible to make motorsport completely safe, F1 has achieved much when it comes to driver safety in the last 70 years, while at the same time continuously pushing the performance envelope. If you enjoyed the video, like and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell to stay tuned to our channel.